endure all the same things that the people who are born here would endure. You would learn to eat hot dogs and bratwurst and drink beer, smoke cigarettes, listen to really loud music, learn how to dance badly. But you would also learn what it's like to be in a community of people who are just like you. And you would be just like them. The difference would be you did not start here. And when the time came and there was something that could possibly be done to help, it would not be help coming from the ETs. It would be someone standing by your side, just like you, who says, I think I know a better way. I have a different idea about this. Maybe I can point you in a direction. And there would be something slightly different about them, of course, because they are different. They can't help but be. And so that's how the plan was enacted and carried out. There were many of us brought here to countries all over this world. I just happened to land in the United States in a farmhouse back in the hills of Kentucky. This place is a, a planet that's not smaller or larger than Earth. It's similar to Earth. It's a place called Lanulos. And it orbits a star. Here, the star is called Tau Ceti. Yes, the planet, um, as it was related to me, the name of the planet is called Lanulos. That's, it's a planet that is around a sun that we know on Earth as Tau Ceti. It's a place very much like this place. It has seasons, it has cold areas and warm areas. It has people just like you. It's just a different place. I've never seen any photographs of it from here, although I have seen pictures of it uh, while with uh, the ETs who visited me as a child. Does it look like her? It's very similar. It has its, um, its similarities. There are a few differences. Uh, the oceans are actually over more of the land, over more of the planet than the land is. There are some places where the oceans are full of this type of um, a lily that at the same time every year it goes into bloom and the colors are just quite vivid. The, um, there, there are differences that you might expect one world to another, but it isn't anything very severe. It's a very nice place. In the history that they had taught me about <clears throat> humankind and the people of this world and so forth, it was very clearly shown to me how people on this world didn't originate here. They were brought here, and they weren't brought here like, hey, come on, you're going to have to go or else. People came here because they wanted to, because it was another place, another outpost of humankind. You find similarities there between a lot of the plant and the animal life. So yeah, there's, there's not that huge a difference. There are things that aren't here that are in South America. There are things that are on this other world that aren't here at all. So you have your differences. Even as remote as this world is, you still have a lot of similarities too. And really, you're not human. But that's a whole different subject and a whole different story. You've been led to believe you are but we'll call it humankind, so we have a point of common reference. People like yourselves exist on many worlds out there in the cosmos. You don't know this because that information has been kept from you. But he went on to tell me that part of the reason why I was brought here you see, I'm not unique in that respect. It isn't just that I was brought here and so that makes me special. It doesn't. 
You were brought here too in some past generational scheme. You see, there were a lot of people who were brought here as children. I couldn't say how many people are here that are from my world because it was not part of the plan for us to know one or the other. The idea was that if we did happen to find out, take this as a scenario. Let's say that if everyone in this room suddenly found out for a fact that you were from this other world, what a nice exclusive club we would have. And we could gripe at each other about all the inconsistencies this world has to offer. We would finally take our focus off why we came here and focus upon each other, not accomplishing anything. So the plan was that we don't know one from the other so that we can sit about to achieve what we came here to achieve. And as we get to a point to where we really understand and we're really in balance with who we are and why we're here, then the other people who are around us who are just like ourselves will also start waking up. And as they do, we'll know each other. And the reason is quite simple. The last time there were things that were going to happen on this world, well, there have been a few things that have happened. But the last time there was an attempt to alter human consciousness, was a few thousand years ago. And there were not just the good guys, the people with good intentions towards humankind, but there were also the bad guys, those who were not very friendly at all and had other ideas. So they tried to alter the way people can see themselves and understand the world around them. And in doing so, they directly interfered. When they interfered, religions were born on both sides of the equation. This group interferes and they bring a message of peace, love, hope, and charity. So the other group comes along and they interfere just as overtly. And they bring a mission with them that tells this is how you should live your life, and this is the structure, and if you don't, you die. Somewhere in time, this became cross-pollinated. <clears throat> and in cross-pollination, you now have a, a very severe attitude among those who are psychopathic, who are wanting to achieve states of power, to achieve dominion over those who would listen and then they would have their colony. This is a very complicated thing to go into. But what it matters most to you is that who you are as people was diffused. Your understandings about who you are diffused your history, your true history, that goes back a very long time, obfuscated, hidden away. Because if you knew, you would be much more powerful than you are now. You wouldn't be individuals, you would be a community. And that would be dangerous to the people who are in power. One of the things that I was told by these folks that I had frequent um, visits from is that I wasn't the only one. I wasn't the unique case. Instead, I was one of quite a number of children who were brought here in order to live here and grow here and experience this world. The idea was that basically when you're trying to, well, I wouldn't say trying to, when your intention is to do something good, let's say that we wanted to do something good for a, a lost tribe in the Amazon. Well, if we had their technology, what we could do is we could have uh, a baby show up, boom, there's the baby. And it's like, oh, well, that's pretty interesting. looks a little different than us, but not that much. The baby grows up, and the idea behind having brought the children here 
or even in this example, having taken a child there in this far-fetched example, is that the child is growing up and it's getting some information periodically from where it came from. It also has a much different reasoning capacity, a different intellect, and different properties, the psychic abilities, for example. There comes a point where maybe these people are time travelers. I don't know. I don't know what their 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 end goal is completely. But as I understand it, it, it was to help to guide this world by empowering people individually, being an example and helping others to find their powers within themselves. Apparently, they tried to do this in the past. And in those times, in, in the distant past, when they would try to do something of this nature, it really went far out of hand. The messenger became more important than the message. And when that happens, then it, um, at least in some cultures, it deifies the messenger and others it demonizes them. But it, it changes the entire intent. So in this particular example, apparently uh, there is something that's just ahead, just ahead for the people of this world. And I believe it's something very good. You know, there's a lot of people talking about all the negative things that can happen, and, you know, you hear about it constantly. It's all this bad stuff, all these frightening things. Well, and left unattended, perhaps. That could be the case. But they seem to have felt that there was a reason to put these individuals, myself included, into this into this world so that we might have some slight influence on how in the midst of, of all the, the smoke and fire, in the midst of the anxiety, that there was also a voice that would say, it doesn't have to be this way, you know? It can be better, and I'll show you how. And whether that's in a spiritual respect or technological or fill in the blanks, I think that the people who came here have a, a wide variety of talents and reasons for being here. And uh, if, if you take a look around at some of the things that have happened in the past 50 years, uh, some of the movements that have taken place, maybe Greenpeace, uh, there, there are people very interested in saving the dolphins, saving the ocean, saving the trees, saving the planet looking out for our better interests when it comes to food or water or the air we breathe, activists of all sorts. Well, I don't know, but could they have possibly been influenced so that their small voice would be listened to and a larger and larger uh, number of voices would be added to theirs because they had a salient uh, thing to, to speak about, something that was poignant and uh, important. And I felt that it was time to be me. I felt it was necessary to be who I am. And that incorporated the entire repertoire. I'm not from this world. I never have been. That was the first step that I had to take, accepting that about myself and saying, yeah, well, if they don't like it, so what? And the last thing is that if you want to bring out the best in others, give them the best of who you are and watch them evolve as a result of what gift you've given them.